Hello and welcome to another episode of I Was There, starring Dave Munoz. Now, today we've got a little bit of a different episode. We're going to be talking about, really, what made all this possible. Dave's stories and the camera. The camera that captured the moment. So, Dave Munoz, right here, happy to have you on. Thank you very much. Nice to be here, Chris. Let's get into it right away. Let's talk about what kind of camera this is and why you chose it. It's a Yashica FX2. Um, it's an off-brand. It's definitely not something that you would buy in a camera store. And it was something actually that I, that I bought through Chevron Oil Company when I had my credit card and they sent you this little ad that says, for three easy payments of $35, you can have this camera and these lenses in this bag. Wow. Wow, so it came as a bundle set and everything? Yep. That was funny, yes. That's super cool. And did you, um, did you know you wanted to do photography? I mean, some of these shots are incredible. Like really, really good. But did you know you wanted to take photos of music when you when you got this, or did you say? Uh... Yeah, that, that that was the main reason why. Um, my buddy Kevin went to a lot of concerts with me too, and, and I'm six four, and Kevin's five eight. And Kevin, you know, couldn't get the shots when we were standing on the floor. So oftentimes he was on top of my shoulders taking shots, and I started thinking, well, hell, why don't I start taking some shots? So I bought this camera specifically with rock concerts to see if I could do that in mind. I had no idea what to do because it's fully manual. Wow. Um, but, but I learned over time. It seems like Kevin was a, a influential part of this. The inspiration behind, you know, you getting the camera, which turned out to be an incredible <laughs> decision because we wouldn't have all this without it. You took it to your first concert. What was that first concert that you took it to? Uh, the first concert I took it to was actually an outdoor show with um, The Who. So, and I got some, some pretty good pictures of it. In fact, got several. Shooting outdoors was so much easier than shooting indoors. And, and I thought about it too, and I said, you know, let me try something easy first to give it a shot. Um, as it turned out too, that shooting um, outdoors, I got some great pictures of the Who, but you know, unfortunately those were the days when you had roommates and you had a lot of people over the house and things. And for some reason, those photographs disappeared with the exception of one oh, of no. Pete Townsend. So, but it was, uh, it was a little rough, but that, you know, that happens sometimes. Yeah. And also with the camera for the indoor shows, what I was thinking about too was, I wanted to have something, some evidence of the show because sometimes there was maybe due to something in the air, you didn't always remember everything. Right, right. So just just yeah. to let you know. It could happen. So let's talk about the tech of the camera. It Was it fully manual? Is everything manual about this camera? It, it is absolutely manual. Yeah, the, the entire thing, you know, whereas today it's the point and shoot. That, yeah. that, that's just, yeah. that's so easy. But. But with this, you had to figure out the, the shutter speed because the shutter opens and closes at different speeds. Um, and I'll tell you about that in a second too, <laughs> some of the failures. Um, but then also the, uh, the aperture of the lens too, to how much light you let in for it. Yep. And again, these were things that, that Kevin was a photographer. Mm -hmm. Kevin did some stuff in high school and, and he also worked for a uh, photo developing company, which was proved very, you know, very, very handy a little later on. But then the other piece is, is um, what they call ASA, which was the film speed. Yeah. So the higher the ASA, the less light you, you could work yeah, with. Right, right. So, and then when you went into these indoor shows, you can see some of these that are, that are pretty dark backgrounds. Um, you have to do a slower ASA. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. So you, you, and you had to figure those, and the combinations of those three were much more than you thought about too. Yeah, so. right. It had to be almost a trifecta. Now, right. this must have been difficult uh, because this is rock and roll, so there's a lot of movement going absolutely. on. And I would imagine having, you know, to take a longer time to capture the image, while maybe a crowd is moving around you, it seems, it seems pretty difficult. That was another piece with the shutter speed where you had to have the shutter open only so long. If you kept it open too long, you would see the blurs of the trails and yeah. things like that too. Wow. Why did you develop the film into slides instead of photos? Because we didn't have the money. <laughs> slides, were, <laughs> slides were so much cheaper. Yeah, right. And, and it's it just blind luck okay. that, uh, that I found out too that the, the integrity of slides, the integrity of the color, the integrity of the slides as well, over years because these sat in a box for probably the better part of 30 years. Yeah, sat in a box too, and had they been prints, the negatives you get with prints would not have reproduced anything near this quality. Yeah. I so, but you know, back then it was like, you know, 250 to get uh, 36 developed for slides and probably $4, which was a substantial difference back then. <laughs> right, you right. Know, for, for a kid with, you know, spent all his money on concerts and, you know, probably beer. Right. <laughs> so, you know, as far as budgeting it correctly, that was the biggest reason for it. Yeah. I want to ask you about, like, because obviously we have cameras that shoot photos and oh my video gosh. now yes. and 4K and a smaller size and stuff like that. Um, 
are you into camera still to this day? And like, do you still do photography and, or of any concerts you go to? I know you still go to concerts. Or yeah, so I still go to some concerts, but um, in all honesty, I don't take that many pictures. I try, <clears throat> and I've got a pretty good iPhone, um, but I don't have the new one that's out with the latest and the greatest and everything else right. too. So I get a little frustrated with it as well. And, it, and it's kind of like, you know, when, when you end with something like this, a, a certain part, um, you're a little hesitant to start up again. Yeah, no, I hear you. Um, and that's a great thought because I'd like to know, and maybe we'll make an entire episode about this, what was the last photo you took with this and at what concert? That would be a good episode, huh? I'd have to think about that. <laughs> well, stay tuned, guys, because that yeah. may be an episode coming up. What? Let's talk about Flash, right? So. I know you've been in some situations where being discreet was important. So in d dimly lit environments, how did you work with flash? Did you have a flash on this? I definitely had a flash for this. Um, and using the flash once at a concert would have got me a ticket out the door in a heartbeat. I don't know what they would do today, but I knew back then it wasn't, you know, that they would just take the film out of your camera and say, here you go. They, they would take the whole camera. I saw it happen several times. So that's why we were always very discreet. You had to be very discreet with this too. With, with a camera. Man, it boggles the mind because you've been to nearly, if not over a thousand concerts and you've taken this here all with the risk of losing this camera and not any in a thousand times did you ever get your camera confiscated. So yeah, you were like... It's a, the nothing venture, nothing gain, I guess. I, that's, that was my, my attitude. But, you know, what's... what's yeah. Well, the worst thing I could do was take my camera away from me too, but, um, you know, that didn't happen because I... I, yeah. I I knew venues, I knew kind of where security was and things like that too, and I knew that, you know, you, you don't stand up like this and focus for a half hour, you gotta get up quick and hit it and bring the camera back down. Wow. Did you ever think of bringing a backup? Like, so in case, just in case, you pull out and <laughs> out another one and... No, nowhere to put it. Good yeah, because you had to point. smuggle it in too, and, and we had a way of smuggling these cameras in too, because Kevin and I both had relatively the same setup with cameras. Uh, his was probably much nicer than mine was, uh, but they still broke down the same way too that we uh, we separated pieces for it. Oh, okay. How, how, talk to me about that process. So. Well, with, with the camera here, um, we're quick just taking the lens. Mm -hmm. Ooh, there we go. And taking the lens off the camera. Um, this would go in one sock. So put that in the top. We always kind of wore athletic socks under under our jeans with that too. And thank God for bell bottoms. They came in real handy then. <laughs> and this would go into the other sock. And then once we got in, we would just simply put the camera back together. Uh, yeah. Thankfully, and, and we, we only that, brought the one lens too. I, mean, I didn't mean to interrupt, but no, no, no. You, you couldn't use a zoom lens because the zoom lens would not let enough light yeah. in. Because so yeah, you get very close, but it'd be a very dark subject. Right. This technology hasn't changed much in terms of lenses. In fact, uh, there's always a resurgence or a desire for vintage lenses. The so retro. Even with the brand new cameras, they're like, oh, let me get that old, that old school look. So this is your baby. This is what you brought in with every concert. <clears throat> The Yashica, right? Correct? Yashica FX2. Yashica FX2. And where is this company now? Have you? Are they gone? Have you ever gotten another camera from them? Or? I don't know that Yashica was anything more than something, you know, somebody decided to build in a garage. Who knows? <laughs> right. Because right. I figured something like that too. Because back in the day, the Canon AE1s were the, were the, were the great cameras yeah. as well. If you had one of those and it was just, you know, it was very impressive. And mm -hmm. I had a Yashica. Um, so a couple more questions for you here on this. Uh, obviously, you've taken this into so many concerts and thankfully it hasn't been confiscated, but there must have been some issues. Were there any uh, issues with getting a shot or, you Me know? make mistakes? Yeah. Are you kidding me? <laughs> right, right. I mean, look at these photos. I don't think so. But yeah, I've made so. some classic mistakes with this. Um, different ones as far as uh, when you load the film, opening the back, you load the film, you actually manually put it in and then crank it a few times too. And there was a couple concerts where where I shot, you know, an entire roll of film and never advanced a single frame. So I got zero. What? And yeah, and I don't remember which concerts I was going to say, yeah. what concerts do you think you missed? Okay. So one of my worst blunders with this camera too, a very good friend of mine in Las Vegas back in uh, about 1981, Keith McDougall knew I'd done a lot of photography. He was getting married and, you know, we all didn't have a whole lot of money too. So with a photographer, I said, you know, for a wedding present, I'll just photograph your, your, your wedding. And he goes, you do that? I go, yeah, no, it'd be my pleasure. So, and I was shooting in, um, shooting indoors, and I was using a flash, and my shutter speed for flash, the fastest shutter speed you can have is 60. Mine happened to be on 125. So if you do the math, what I did was I took about 100 pictures, and the left side of the uh, frame was all that developed. 
So I got some great pictures of, of Keith, but unfortunately nothing of his bride, not a single one of his bride. Oh my goodness. So that was that was, that was a tough pill to swallow. So yeah. the marriage didn't work out for him, so I don't feel so bad. He's now married to a beautiful woman that grew up that's in the same almost, town as I did. But that's almost prophetic though. Like oh my literally God. you got half the photo. That was that was a lesson, yeah, well learned. Oh I pulled it out and I thought, they developed these things wrong. Right. And I, I think I spoke to Kevin, he goes, No. He goes, your shutter speed was twice as fast as it twice. should have been. Wow. So those are life lessons that you learn and they stay with you. Uh, so speaking of that, some of the blunders, what are some of your favorite shots? Some of the best photos you've ever taken? It's interesting too, and I, being so close, and, and especially with a camera like this, you have to be really, to get some of these close-ups like you see of, of you know, Jagger, of course, Freddie and Tom Petty, um, having to be that close and getting those. This is one of my favorite shots, Tom Petty. Um, Sammy Hagar is another one too, which you can see just over your shoulder here. That uh, it, it just it was it was a great action picture. So I know this is going to be tough, but what's your number one picture that you've ever taken? The number one picture is probably the Alice Cooper, just because of the way it came about. Yeah. You know that that the, the dialogue between us and everything else that was happening. It was just uh, it was a surreal moment. Yeah. I thought you know I'm just some some schmuck out there with a camera, and, and yet he takes the time to say. You know, get ready because here it comes. You're going to get shot, yeah. And uh, we actually did an entire episode on that moment, so you're definitely going to want to check out that episode uh, with Alice Cooper and just the moment that Dave actually got to share with him right there in the moment. When did you, uh, and I know we're going to do, we got to do an episode about the last photo that you took, but when did this camera actually get retired? You know, it was probably 35, 40 years ago, wow. to be honest with you. And you've held on to it in such great condition. That's yeah, I just, uh, you know, it's, it's, it was a part of me for, for a few years. It was just, it was an awful lot of fun to work with. And I knew that if I needed something, and I always consider myself a very, very, very amateur photographer that got lucky on a few things. A few, so, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Uh, well, thanks Dave so much for uh, just coming and talking about the camera, the gear that you shot. I'm telling you, because this I feel like this is historic, just this show and some of the photos that are being shown for the first time here. Um, and this is the camera that took them, so I think it deserved an episode on of its own, and uh, you definitely gave us some good info about it. So. Yeah, and in, in, in my book, I've got about, I think about 150 photographs that I took, and um, some of them too, there's... Like I said, I try and tell a story behind it too to try and put you right where those were. But um, as I look at these photographs, and that's why I have so much fun down here, I take a look at those and I, and I can pretty much jump back to that place in time and uh, remember that conversation. So this is really a time machine here, this True. wall. This is, you know, portals into these different moments. That's fantastic. Yeah, and I'm not living in the 70s, but it's <laughs> right. really nice sometimes to revisit them. Yeah. And that's it too. And, I, and I've got friends... You know that I grew up with that went to conscience with me as well, and they come over here, and a couple in particular will not leave the downstairs my my basement right. because they said just the vibe. And he said, you know, I remember I was at that show, I was at that one, I was at this one. Yeah, it really is. And and guys, don't forget, he's got like like he said, nearly 150 photos roughly in his new book. I was there. So uh, tell us a little bit about the book, real quick. Yeah, again, I was there. Uh, my journey through classic rock in San Francisco, and it takes a look at the uh, the, the venues, the different bands because the, the late 70s, in, in my opinion, and again, it's only my humble opinion, uh, really had some of the, the greatest bands starting out at that time, had some of the other bands that have been around for a while that have really perfected it, so it, it, it's a snapshot in time, um, but I think it was, was one of the times where rock was really a, one of the highest points that it hit. Wow. It's gonna be a great read. You're gonna to wanna to pick it up. Uh, when it is released, the link will be down in the description below, so you can go ahead and pick up a copy uh, right now. And of course, stay tuned for more of I Was There. We've got more incredible stories from Dave Munoz um, dealing with some of the greatest rock legends of all time, and he's got the photos to match. So thanks, Dave, again. I'm Chris. We'll see you in the next one. Thank you.